don't have the education to for this job. I says, well, there's nobody else around. It says, well, even though even though there's no one else to take the job, and we can't give it to you because of your lack of education. I said, well, okay, fine. So I decided to come back to school, and when I came back to school, childcare became an issue. He was one years old when I started and missed lots of work. I even re quit my job in order to stay home with him. To find a babysitter and to come up with payments besides your rent, besides your power and besides everything else, um, it's very difficult. But I see a lot of single mothers are struggling for childcare or childcare money. And you can't just walk into a place, I need money for this and that. But. I see a lot of students who have had issues with childcare and, and end up in the long run. Obviously it affects their attendance if they don't have the caregiver um, at home. They can't come to school because someone's going to look after their kids. Or we have children in classes. <laughs> We put up some ads and we got a call from this daycare in town that she has spaces available and then when it was time to put the kids in she wanted two weeks advance payment and when you're a student you don't got money to play around with. There is childcare for my son but it's really expensive. It's um, and they're not, they did the long waiting list and he's going to be at the end of the waiting list because we had to wait so long there's usually deadlines. We have a number of students in the community who have children and are struggling with that because of the lack of childcare in town. Um, there's really no licensed daycares for children under the age of two in Anuvik, so that causes a lot of problems and it leaves it up to the young moms to find their own childcare. Then yeah, there's waiting lists to get into these daycares as well, right? I think. Um for us, for Pierre to get into the Midnight Sun Daycare, which is now the Inuvik Child Development, took us a year to, for a waiting list, so it's pretty, pretty long. We often hear the statements that um, children are our future, children are our greatest resource, and uh, sometimes I, I think that this is just lip service if we're not investing our organizations, our government, our um, people that, that can provide the necessary resources are not taking a, a serious look and saying that yes, we do need to, to invest in, um, in child care in the early years. Tasha really spearheaded us here at the school looking into starting a daycare at the school. There was a daycare at Samuel Hearn a number of years ago and what we found is a lot of people think it's a good idea and with the funding from ec &E, it covers the daily operating costs of a daycare here at the school and we have the facilities for it but we can't find anyone to cover the cost of staffing which is about hundred thousand dollars per year and as much as people think it's a good idea and it would help our students and their children no one wants to commit my family anyways we either got to quit our jobs and stay home with our children or else we would have to miss a couple days during the week because our babysitters don't show up or we can't access the programs. They want money up front before you or they need to know the date and time you get paid and they want their money then. It stresses me out because there's days where I need to do exams and things like that and I can't find a babysitter and I need the government to really take a second look at this and to, to benefit from your education you need somebody's support. With the bills that we have we couldn't afford to give her two weeks advance payment so that kind of got thrown out the window and then I was going to school with a girl here um, and uh, she quit because her mother couldn't find adequate babysitting for her kids so she stayed home with her mom's kids and she's, that's what she's doing now so I went to see her and I asked her if she can babysit and she said she's already got her hands full and I asked her if she knew anybody 
So the next day she phoned one of her friends and I guess her friend was not going to school either and she said she'd babysit and it's been two days now, so. When we pay for him, it usually costs us about 800 bucks and that's like not even babysitter or nothing. And with the babysitter, it'd be about 1,200 bucks a month and we can't even afford that because I'm only making 300 bucks and he's making only 800 bucks. So it's really, it's really not easy. You know, we try to accommodate the best we can. We obviously can't have someone who's going to have a child in class all the time because of everybody else in the classroom, but we do accommodate when we can, especially on um, PD days. Like, if the school has a PD day, that's a big one. Like, school-age children will be in class, for sure. Um, at our learning centre, we have a gym over there, so sometimes we try to, you know, set up a little corner so they can be in the gym. The ages zero to five are our fundamental years in a child's development in, in terms of um, importance. I think those are, are one of the most important stages in uh, that a child learns so much in, in terms of um, security and, and confidence that helps him or her in their adult lives. Job. Iguana. Hi. So one of my children, the youngest one there, has um, seizures. The other childcare providers that were in town wouldn't take her because of her condition, and which is kind of discriminatory. And um, but she's on medication, and it doesn't happen anymore. And um, when um, we tried to put her into a couple of other daycares, they wouldn't take her because of her medical condition. And of course, safety would be a huge one, especially for, for me who works 12-hour 12, 12 shifts. I can't just come and go when there's an emergency as easy as someone perhaps who works in an office. Maybe they could sneak away for 10 minutes and not be noticed, that kind of thing. Well, I feel upset because like they're sitting there all day saying, oh, we just learned this, we just learned this, and I'm sitting at home not learning anything. And they just, I feel jealous. I feel really jealous of them. I like. I envy them so much because they have this whole life ahead of them and they didn't they didn't mess up as a kid and I never messed up either but like they're all sitting here in school having so much fun and I'm at home no, not doing anything. And now it's very frustrating because we see young moms like Tasha who want to be in school and want to have a better life for themselves and their children and really they're unable to do so because the care isn't available in the town and we've had students leave Inuvik and go elsewhere where they can find support. So it is frustrating because you know obviously we're here to promote education and help our students do well and succeed and there's just this lack of support and services for childcare in town that, that's stopping them, that's preventing them from doing so. I feel kind of angry and left out because everybody's doing what they want and what they need to do to raise their family. And it's kind of mad because you're stuck at home watching your own kids and while you could be out there looking for something new to do. The goal of this Children's First Society is to build this building for quality daycare for the children of Inuvik. And it'll be one building where you, zero to five, the children would go there. And either be in daycare, after school care, Aboriginal Head Start program, or preschool. I think uh, sometimes we also we need to look at other jurisdictions, <clears throat> such as Quebec, uh, which offers universal child care uh, at a low rate to parents right across the board, regardless of their income or their status, you know, so that all children do have this, um, this priority, not only within their families, but within the government and within their society. But so 39 out of 69 of the students who completed the report um, reported having children, um, at least one child living with them. Six of them, six out of 25, so that works out to be about a quarter of them reported they could not find reliable childcare in September. 
so that's at least a quarter of those who who finished who did the the exam. Um, uh, some a few reported using uh, Aboriginal Head Start, um, four paid sit babysitter, and two to childcare or daycare. Um, the majority of our students utilize family if possible, um, or will bring common laws uh, with them who will end up looking after their children. There's so many professionals in the town, as well as single moms who are probably looking to better themselves and. Um, Family, you can only count on family so much. So I think um, I think the I think the new school with having the daycare on would be a definite asset, especially for single moms. Then that way they don't even have to stop school. They could have the daycare right there and still be close enough if if they wish so. If they had a a center for students that are trying to further their education through the college, maybe something would work out. There's so much empty rooms in the school that could be used for childcare. There's so much people who we could find to be the babysitters and not babysitters, but like, you know, the people who run the childcare. There's so much like stuff that can be done. In the last few years since um, Inupaluit Average now Head Start has started and some of the kids have been to preschool. Uh, it's really no noticeable when they come in in September because Already they, they have, a, um, they, they know colors, uh, numbers, their ABCs, they can write their names. Um, so there's many things that they're already ahead of just from those programs. When we were growing up, it was the responsibility of uh, the whole community to take, look out for the young kids. Eh? and we were taught to respect our elders. And this is where, where we learned all our cultural knowledge from. Affordable is what I keep stressing, affordable daycare, quality daycare.